Hi. You are watching. The Senere Guildmaster, Hyunju, sits with Yanju praising her young rookie for being cute and sly while Yanju tries to send her off by calling her an old lady and pissing her off. The conversation turns serious when Hyunju mentions this appearance of the mutated monster, a doing of the demonic order, and the possibility of this news spreading outside of the big five guilds since the demonic order is active like never before at the moment and it will create chaos among humans if they get to know that there's a cult offering live humans as sacrifices. Hyunju questions what the Red Rose Guild's take is on this situation situation, making Yanju halt with eyes wider than ever. Their conversation is interrupted by Oh Kong Wu, who has a little introductory chat with Hyunju as she takes her leave. As Yanju hands him the S-rank gate permit he asked for, she warns him to not even think about hunting there while he sits there amused at the power of the guild to arrange the card right away. While sipping on his tea, Kong Wu mentions eavesdropping on the conversation between the two ladies, which Yanju already figured he did, and asks if this demonic order is behind the mutations of the monsters. She mentions that this cult offers live humans as sacrifices, while nobody knows when this cult was formed and what kind of people it holds so the guild is cooperating with the government into hunting down the cult. From researching and script writing to editing and mastering our best manhwa review channel. I will work hard to roll out the highest quality manhwa entertainment videos twice or more a week. If you like what I do here, please consider supporting the channel. To learn more about how to support the channel, check out the link in the description box down below and if you can't give or simply don't even feel like it, that's okay too. I am just happy you're here. Thank you so much. Kung Wu is confused at why only the Red Rose Guild is working the hardest and cooperating with the government to which Yanju tells him that this would of course improve their image, but the more important reason is that many of her guild members have been sacrificed while investigating the demonic order and she just won't let their sacrifice be in vain. Kung Wu is impressed by the rancor sitting in front of him as he can sense her murderous intent upon the significant loss of her people. Kung Wu figures that this is the favor Yanju is meaning to ask from him so Yanju explains that the extent of the power this cult holds is still unknown so it's upon Kong Wu to decide if he will help them defeat the demonic order or not. Kong Wu agrees the helping her since she's been helping him too, so he should return the favor. Yanju is satisfied with this, but doesn't know that Kong Wu is excited about this since the more demons he defeats, the more demonic energy will come to him. While traveling towards the S-rank gate, Kong Wu observes his rank and details about summoning a demon. He can only summon a demon once every three months, and the more demonic energy he uses while summoning, the stronger the demon summoned will be. The summoned demon would automatically identify him as his master. Knowing he can only use this once every three months, he needs to summon the strongest possible demon. He thinks the concept through and realized that his demonic energy is going to open portals to other dimensions, and the higher the rank of the gate he opens to the other dimension, the stronger will be the demon he summons. He reaches the S-rank gate and uses the card given by Red Rose to enter the portal. The place turns out to be an ocean, which seems to give a very calming picture, but has a flaw of S-rank monsters appearing there. Kung Wu finds an appropriate spot and starts his demon summoning spell, but the spell creates a green hue rather than the bluish hue he's always seen scaring him that the spell might have reversed or been messed up, but the system mentions that he successfully connected to the continent of Eleanor and summoned a demon. As the spell ends and the gates close, he notices that he ended up summoning a dragon, Echidna. Also quick reminder as we are going through the recap, if you are new to the channel, some of you watching, are not already subscribed, and if that's you, and you want to guarantee you're always up to date with all good content like this, so feel free to hit that subscribe button and join us on the road to a million subs. And if you enjoy the video, or if you found it interesting, let me know by dropping a like and comment on it as well would be seriously appreciated. Let's continue. As Kung Wu notices the vulnerable condition of his dragon with wounds all over the body and barely string enough to hold herself, five people fall out of the portal between him and the dragon speaking a language he cannot comprehend and dressed up like they're in some role play. Not understanding what's happening, Kong Wu uses his power of communication to comprehend their language. Turns out they're the ones fighting the dragon and asking Kong Wu if he's fine. The leader guy introduces himself as Reynold, the third prince of the Arnon Empire, while Kong Wu thinks to himself how he's never heard of that empire or the continent ever so they must be from another world. He also notices how the group involves an elf and a dwarf as well, but his thoughts are distracted by the dying dragon. The others who were satisfied with finally hurting the dragon enough that it'll die are shocked when Kong Wu starts using his power of resurrection to heal Echidna. Echidna communicates with Kong Wu through thoughts and acknowledges him as his master while thanking him for the treatment while Reynold is curious at Kong 
Kung Wu realizing he is the master of what he considers a devil. Kung Wu asks why they were trying to kill Echidna while trying to control his anger to which a furious Reynold explains that the dragon brought plague and drought to their empire using its magic and power. Echidna cries that she didn't do anything while Kung Wu is also confident and explains that she would have been undefeatable if she had the power to cause atmospheric phenomenon like a drought, but the dumb prince just wouldn't listen and started screaming that there is no other explanation to anyone else doing so. Kung Wu is curious at this group, hating people who are blindsided by their thoughts of justice and never consider what someone opposing them has to say. As they get ready to kill Echidna, Kung Wu uses his power of explosion establishing a rivalry with the weird people in front of him. Kung Wu exclaims with a deadly intent that even if Echidna did cause drought and plague, she is now his familiar, and no one is allowed to harm her now. A wounded Echidna gets teary-eyed upon hearing someone is not ready to give up on her. Like some dramatic kid, Reynold exclaims some emotional words about defeating Kong Wu for the sake of his empire, while the rest of his group gushes over how cool and strong he is. Kong Wu finds them ridiculous and thinks they've lost their kind or someone, but Echidna warns him to be careful. As the combat starts, Kong Wu realizes that Reynold is not only big words, but has the strength to fight him. Kong Wu takes his fight farther from Echidna and faces all five of the weirdos at the same time using his skills like the power of explosions, iron walls, and heat wave downpour on them and managing to fight them. He notices how Reynold shouts the name of his attack before using it, which is stupid but beneficial for Kong Wu. After having an intense fight with an overconfident Reynold, Kong Wu decides to put an end to this and uses his skilled shouting technique as bait. Kong Wu exclaims blade slash preparing Reynold for it only to attack him differently on his leg, confusing the prince who is now incapable of the fight while Kong Wu enjoys this with satisfaction. Knowing he has no way to survive, Reynold asks his friends to run away to save themselves for the survival of their empire, but they are reluctant on leaving Reynold behind. Kong Wu is pissed at the emotional chaos since for him things have always been this way. In hell, there was no mercy, he used to just kill every demon in his way to survive so forgiveness was not in his nature. Before he could end all this drama, the girl from the group came in front of the wounded Reynold as a shield to protect him and started begging for Kang Wu's mercy for him to either take her life or do whatever he wants in exchange for leaving Reynold alive since the Arnon Empire's hopes lie in his hand. Kang Wu watches another emotional roller coaster go down as she expresses her feelings to Reynold and then asks for Kang Wu's mercy. Kang Wu questions why should he do that. This confuses everyone since people usually expect such emotional scenes to produce a positive outcome. But proving a logical point, Kong Wu questions on would they have spared his life if he asked them to. If they were the ones to initiate a fight and pick a sword against someone, they should have been prepared to die too. The dramatic group cannot believe things turned against them, but arrogant Reynold still tries to insult Kong Wu by calling him nasty Kong Wu retaliates with the ones who gang up on others being nasty and no matter how this group puts it, they are not innocent. As Kong Wu is ready to end it all, the Gaia system opens up and mentions that foreign intruders other than Kang Wu's familiar will be ruled out and sent back to their worlds. Kong Wu does not like this one bit as he was aiming Athos revenge and taking up their equipment, but right before he could hit Reynold, he disappears back to his world. As Kong Wu moves towards Echidna, he thinks of this Gaia system and how it seems to be a barrier between the worlds, but he remembers how it was activated when he was moving back to Earth but showed some malfunction that let him cross the barrier. He thinks of the monsters appearing lately being linked to this malfunctioning in the Gaia system and notices how it's been happening for two to three weeks. Suddenly it befalls Kong Wu that it's exactly since Kong Wu came here so no doubt he messed up with the barrier protection system. He sits down panicked about what he has done while all he wanted was to come back to earth to enjoy some kimchi stew. His panic is broken upon a wounded echidna talking and he figures there's no use in worrying over something that doesn't have answers yet and moves towards healing echidna completely. While healing echidna, he communicates about the possibility of her reducing her huge size along with asking about the continent of Eleanor. She tells him that it's a continent that uses magic and is filled with elves, dwarfs, monsters, and dragons. Upon this information, he wonders if all the monsters have been coming from that continent. Echidna turns herself to a size small enough that she seems like a Pokemon and shares with Kong Wu how she lived with her father until one day he disappeared and left her alone. She used to spend her time in the library studying different books until she was so randomly attacked. This makes Echidna teary-eyed, and she once again clarifies that she didn't do anything. She turns to Kong Wu, trembling with innocence shining in her eyes, and questions if he believes her. He finds familiarity in that innocence and trembles with his childhood self who was an orphan and always craved to be loved and cared for. Kong Wu reassures her that he'll always believe her. Siela gets obsessed over the cute little form of Echidna, scaring the innocent dragon into hiding by Kang Wu's side. She thanks Kong Wu for guiding her to a good party and giving her pointers for her third awakening making Kong Wu feel good about
about the idea of being important to someone. Kong Wu wakes up the next day feeling extremely tired and lethargic making Siela and Echidna worried about him being sick. In his yawning and tiredness, Kong Wu fails to notice that he's sitting next to a little girl he's never seen before. The little girl praises Siela for the cereal, making her gush over cute little Echidna liking the taste of the cereal. This wakes Kong Wu pretty well as he notices that Echidna has changed her form to be a little girl rather than a small dragon slash fox-like look. His shocked expression confuses Siela, who thought he knew she could change her appearance, but upon asking Echidna shares that she felt a strong sensation while she was asleep and she had her appearance changed when she woke up. Kong Wu wonders, while watching the little girl stuff her mouth with food, that it must somehow be related to him feeling extremely tired and wonders if she could change back to her original form. He asks if Echidna could do that, and she stands up responding affirmatively and proceeding to change her appearance, not noticing the alarmed faces of the two humans who know the apartment is too small for her original size. After calling for repairing the damage to the apartment, Siela thinks of going to the convenience store to buy clothes for Echidna while Kong Wu thinks of the clear influence Echidna had on him to turn to this human form as well as speaking their language with fluency. Nevertheless, Kong Wu is satisfied that he can take her around in this form with more convenience. He excuses himself from the shopping plan since he needs to visit the Red Rose Guild. Kong Wu visits Yanju and briefs her about the entire situation about summoning Echidna, dealing with the weirdos, malfunctioning of the Gaia system, and Echidna turning into a human. Yanju figured he now needs an ID for Echidna. He then asks Yanju if she knows anything about the Gaia system while being engrossed in his phone. As she tells him it's the first time she's hearing about this and proceeds to ask what exactly is his identity to be able to summon a dragon as his demon. Kong Wu is busy looking at an adorable picture of Echidna in a dragon onesie. He responds to the text and then responds to Yanju as she wonders to whom she offered her hand. As Kong Wu is about to ask for yet another request from Yanju, someone interrupts them. Wei In, the core commander of the Warang Corps, where the S-rank gate is located visits Yanju about some urgent matter, but proceeds to meet Kong Wu and recalls meeting him before at the C-rank gate. Yanja thinks he must have beaten up some guard there making Kong Wu give her a bored look since even Wei-in praises that he was very polite there making Yanju nauseous with the idea. Yanju asks what Kong Wu wanted, and he asks for an official pass to the S-rank gate rather than a temporary one. This panics the lady since she knows he's planning to hunt there. Kong Wu is confident that he can hunt well with his familiar as he also knows the kind of monsters that reside in the S rank including wyverns, giant ogres, mountain giants, and the lake creature El Cuero. She lets him have the pass on condition that he won't go near the lake. Yanju even calms the confused and alerts Wei In that he is capable to hunt there making Wei In think about it and trust Yanju with having the player in her hands. But Yanju has come to think that maybe the player has got her in his hands. After his leave, Wei In briefs Yanju that their member who infiltrated the demonic order will be able to give them video evidence the next day at the contact point at Suwon, Weizio Station, a location near the S rank gate where Kong Wu will be hunting the same day. If you enjoyed the video, subscribe to watch more videos like these, turn on notifications, and leave a like and comment to help the channel out. From researching and script writing to editing and mastering our best manhwa review channel, I will work hard to roll out the highest quality manhwa entertainment videos twice or more a week. If you like what I do here, please consider supporting the channel. To learn more about how to support the channel, check out the link in the description box down below and if you can't give or simply don't even feel like it, that's okay too. I am just happy you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching, we will see you on the next video.